guys, it's Jesse here from Elevate with another chemistry video. Now what we're going to be looking at today is enthalpy and again we're going to be looking at boosting our understanding and we're going to do that by tackling some questions. The first one that we're going to be looking at is from the VCE 2014 chemistry exam question 3 and the first thing I want you to do is pause the video and have a crack. Fantastic. Now look guys, I'll be honest, I hope you actually didn't find this one too challenging. This was a pretty easy question overall, but of course there were always some tricks. And regardless, let's boost our understanding right now and really nail those fundamentals. So I'm actually going to skip reading all of this for now. I'm sure at some point it will be relevant, but right now what I'm going to look at is this picture right here. This is all about enthalpy and we, as we know, that's about heat flowing. And right now we've got ethanol being burnt, lighting this water. And of course, we could read the temperature on the thermometer, and from that, we could work out the actual amount of energy that is interacting with that water. But if we read the question, we're not actually interested in that. It's looking at the percentage of heat lost. And I'm going to take that to mean that it's any of the heat that doesn't go to the water. It could be to the air, it could be to the retort stand. In fact, it could, to be, could be to anything else other than the water itself. But how we're going to get that, probably, is by working out this value right here. So let's start by getting those numbers from the question as we always do. So we're going to grab 1.8 grams of ethanol, 100 grams of water, and it's going from 25 to 40 degrees Celsius. It looks like a pretty standard question. In addition, they've been pretty generous and actually given us this combustion reaction here. And usually, or be aware of the case, that it says here this combustion of ethanol and that might not always be given to you that full equation. So first things first, hopefully you're aware of this, we're going to be getting those moles of ethanol. So moles of ethanol is simply equal to the mass divided by the molar mass. This should all be pretty straightforward. And I'm going to skip the steps, hopefully you know what they are. And ultimately what we actually get is a figure of zero. 0.0391 moles. Again, hopefully that's pretty straightforward. If not, you've got a little bit of trouble there. So those are our moles. And now the next step is to work out, well, okay, how much energy is going in there? And if I look in this question, I don't really seem to have anything that could really help me out. And I've had that happen a couple of times in more than one exam. And what I end up doing always is look in the data booklet. Now, in this case, the question has reassured us that, yes, that's where we need to go, but always look there if you're feeling stuck. And the formula or the equation we get for the heat of combustion for ethanol is equal to 1,364 kilojoules per mole. Now, a crucial thing called dimensional analysis, which I've expanded upon a bit in some of our other videos, is how this mole per mole and these moles will actually cancel out. So what we're going to do is get our energy released. And that is equal to moles times heat of combustion. And that is equal to, when you multiply these two numbers together, you end up getting 53 0.4 kilojoules. Now again though, this is the energy released overall. So this comes from not just the energy that's interacting with the water, not just the energy that's interacting with the air, but all of the energy that is released from that system. So the amount of energy that was actually absorbed, I'm just going to shrink that to abs, is of course we can use the standard equation that hopefully we're all used to, and we're going to get our 4.18 joules per degree Celsius per gram. And we're going to simply multiply those by the values that we've been given, which is our 180, oh, sorry, 100 grams and our temperature difference. I always see someone who just plugs in one of the temperature values. Make sure you actually grab the temperature difference. And plugging all of that in, gets us that the energy absorbed is 6.27 kilojoules.
Now we're looking for the energy that wasn't absorbed by the system, all these other bits and pieces. So how we're going to get that, of course, is by subtracting the two. So E not absorbed is simply the difference, which comes out to being 47.13 kilojoules. Now again, a lot of students would stop here, but there's at least one mark remaining. Hopefully you know what it is. It should be pretty obvious. It's in the question there. We need an actual percentage value. So how we're going to get that is we're just going to write percentage heat lost. And that is simply equal to 47.13. Divide by the total energy that was released. And that's all going to pop out as 88.3%. Now for these sorts of questions, you will often get a really high number. The vast majority of energy should, in most cases, be lost to the environment. Now if you can think about at least one reason why. Now there's tons of things that could fit in here. Hopefully the most obvious one is when you had a setup like this at school. Was it just looking like this? Usually there is some sort of insulation that's going around that that's preventing heat being further lost to the surroundings. So for question B here, identify one thing that could potentially be a source of inefficiency. Identify something that could limit heat loss. That could include insulation, some sort of lid, or any sort of protective sleeve around the burner. So because we're talking about heat loss to the environment, it actually means at any stage upon this process. So it doesn't have to be heat loss just from this water canister. It can actually be heat loss from down all the way down here in the burner itself. And that's all we're going to be doing for this question. Now there are, of course, other bits to this question, but they're really not quite what we're looking for here. So I'm going to stop this bit right now, and I'll see you in the next